pa sa comment section. <laughs> okay, ayan. Sige. So, again, we'll continue um, with your coccygen parasite, uh, starting first with, again, your sarcocystis. No? So, sarcocystis SPP or sarcocystis species is, again, part of the coccidians or intestinal coccidians pa rin siya. And we have two major species. You have S. bovi hominis or some references also refer to that as S. hominis. Okay? Uh, it can be transmitted through cattle, no? through your uh, cows pa rin. You have S. sui hominis, uh, which is transmitted through your pigs, and we have S. Lindemani or Lindemani, but kanisha na uh, species kaya wala na kaya siya consider today or it's not used anymore. And before it was believed that S. Lindemani was the one that infect man, okay? And especially um, it, it uses man as an intermediate host, diba? So ayan. Pero now it's not marag accepted anymore, okay? Now man, kita, we can serve as different hosts. Definitive host, if ang atumakwa kay si S. hominis and S. Sui hominis and intermediate host FCS Lindemani na shadir. So, na sa post spelling, sorry. So Lindemani, okay? But again, the S Lindemani na term now or species kaya wala na siya gigamit. Okay, so it's not used anymore. Okay, now infective stage would depend pun siya kung unsa imo makuha, no? Kita as as the host. If ato makuha kay the sarcosis, then we become as the definitive host and if we get the oocyst, then we serve as the intermediate host. So later Sa life cycle, mas understand nato why it's like that. Okay. Now, modes of transmission, the pinaka common good is ingestion no? of uncooked meat, usually pig or cows, okay, that contains the sarcosist. Okay. Uh, the sarcosist, later put pag discuss nato, pero for now, para mas masabdan, the sarcosist is a cyst, no, cyst sa imuhang sarcosistis, na ni insist. Okay, or nag, nag live siya, nag reside siya within the muscles. Okay, so same, same siya o concept sa trichinella na to, diba? That they live within the muscles. So for this uh, mode of transmission, if we ate, no, if nakakaunta o pig or beef, no, na undercooked, and then the meat of the the pig or the beef, kay na ay sarcosis sa ilahang muscles, then we become as the definitive host. Kay sarcosis atong nakaon. Or pwede po tang makakaon sa oocyst from feces, okay? Like contaminated food or water bath, okay? Usually water contaminated with feces of the pigs or cattles. And when we eat the oocyst, we become the intermediate host, okay? So, depende siya sa itong infective stage na makuha o depende po siya sa what type of host we're going to be. So, the type of host that we're going to be, kita naman, no? <laughs> Mudepend siya kung unsa na infective stage atong makuha, okay? Alright. But, generally, na siya doon ka infective stage, no? Sarcosist and oocyst. But, the more the more common for humans kita is the ingestion of meat na undercooked. So most of the time we are the definitive host. Okay, all right, ayan. Next, uh, for the life cycle, so we start first with the intermediate host. Usually, um, ang intermediate host good are the pigs and the cows. So let's say the pigs and the cows, of course, the bang infective stage for you to be the intermediate host is the oocyst or the sporocyst inside the oocyst. So once makaw na siya sa pig or cow from feces, no, from sa, sa ground, whatever, that contains the oocysts, uh, the oocysts, of course, mo ato sa imuhang small intestine, and di ba, sulod sa oocysts are still the sporozoids. Now the sporozoids will be released, and the sporozoids, again, follow katong life cycle sa atong na-discuss gapon, the sporozoids will then go to the intestinal epithelium and undergo merogony to produce mga merozoids. Okay. Now, the merozoites, pila ka generations or pila ka cycles of producing merozoites. Now, the merozoites will then become metrocytes, okay? Metrocytes, and kanina mga metrocytes, mato na sa sa muscles, usually mga striated muscles like sa mong uh, skeletal muscles or sa cardiac muscles ba, okay? So, sa pigs and cows, usually sa skeletal muscles, so, mo insist sila or dito sila mo live ang mga metrocytes. And these metrocytes will now form your sarcosyst, okay? Now, the sarcosyst, Again, uh, starting as unicellular, one cell lang. Pero as it go, as it matures, it produces what we call your bra uh, bradyzoites, okay, or bradyzoites, okay, bradyzoites, okay. So from metrocytes, again, siya ang nagform sa imong sarcosyst, okay. Now the sarcosyst, as it matures, it enlarges, mudako imong sarcosyst within the muscles, okay, of your pigs or cows, and then inside the sarcosysts are now the infectious bradyzoites or bradyzoites, okay? The crescent-shaped bradyzoites. Now, please take note of this term, mga bradyzoites, okay? We'll encounter that again in toxoplasma. Kaya po yung mga bradyzoites dito, okay? So, nag-gets lang. So, uh, example, if intermediate host, again, you start, makao ng oocyst, follow, japo, na-release ang sporozoites, 
But this time, ang sporozoites, pag infect niya sa intestine, di ba? After pila ka um, generation produce the merozoites. Now, after gen after pila ka generation of producing merozoites, the merozoites will now become metrocytes, okay? And the metrocytes will be transmitted to your muscles, okay? And in the muscles, again, they form now the sarcocysts, okay? So, ang sulod sa sarcocysts initially kay the metrocytes, okay? Now, once the sarcocyst matures, it now becomes ang sulod niya na himong bradyzoites. And this bradyzoites na ang pwedeng mo gawa sa mo muscle and then mo infect og laing uh, cells. Okay? Ayan. So, again, oocysts. Ayan, may mga, may mga light po. Sorry, nakita kong kwarto. Ayan, so, oocysts, no? And then you have the sporozoites sulod. And then it produces merozoites. Okay? And then the merozoites, after pila ka generations of producing merozoites, it, become, it becomes metrocytes. And then metrocytes will then transfer to the muscles striated muscles usually of the intermediate hosts of cows and pigs, and they form the sarcosis dito, okay? Now, sarcosis, inside the sarcosis, when it matures, it becomes now your bradyzoites, okay? All right, so muna siya yung muhang uh, life cycle sa mga stages sa yung muhang sarcosis in the intermediate host, okay? And usually, generally good, it happens in the cows and mga pigs, okay? Now, we go now to definitive host, so kita, no, as humans. So in humans and other animals, po, Ang atong makaon, di ba, kung definitive host is uh, the sarcosis, di ba? So, gikan sa meat, no, if undercooked. So, inside inside the meat is the sarcosis, di ba? And inside the sarcosis are the bradyzoites. So, if makaon na sa patient or makaon na to ang imuhang uh, meat na contains sa sarcosis, so what happens kay mugawas ang imuhang bradyzoites. And the bradyzoites become motile, no? So, sila ang muliho, okay? Now, the bradyzoites um, will then, sila na po ang muad to, Say mo intestinal cells, and this time, in, instead of forming merozoites, di ba, ang ilang i-form kay mga gametocytes. Ayan, so, through sexual reproduction. Okay? So, ma-form nila ang male and female gametocytes, and di ba, parehas gahapon, kung na ay gametocytes, usually what happens kay mo fuse, di ba sila, they will combine to form a zygote, okay? And this zygote will then produce oocysts, or may mature siya into oocysts, and muni siya ang ipagawas na pod sa imuhang stool, which will now serve as, again, another source of infection and the life cycle mo padayon. Okay? Nagets ra? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, kung definitive host, ganit ka ang imu makaon kay sarcosis. Usually, gikan sa muscle uh, or sa meat of undercooked pork uh, or beef. Okay? Uh, but if you're intermediate, if intermediate host ka, ang imu makaon kay the oocysts. Okay? And the oocysts, ang mahitabuan na kay, mo produce siya og sarcosis sa imuhang muscles. Okay? Kung intermediate host. Alright? Nagets lang? Okay? Alright? Okay, sige. I'll take that as a yes. Okay. So, this is the life cycle. Again, oocyst, as you can see, di ba? But, ang um, main method yun, wa, how we get infected sa, sa, sa humans is, of course, ingestion, again, in undercooked meat. And the undercooked meat consists of the um, bradyzoids, no? In the sarcosists. Okay? Alright. So, ang um, undercooked meat sa pig and uh, beef contains sarcosists, okay? And inside the sarcosists are, kung sa may sulod, ang mga bradyzoids, okay? Alright. So, take note of the term na bradyzoids, kaya magawas na po na siya sa toxoplasma. Alright, okay. Now, for morphology, ang yang oocyst, okay, it's actually similar to eye belly, okay? That it contains uh, two sporocysts and inside the two sporocysts are four large uh, sausage-shaped sporozoids, okay? It's larger than your cryptosporidium oocyst and parehas sa yung cryptosporidium, magpagawas niya sa stool, immediately infective na siya or mature na juda yun siya paggawas sa stool. So, pwede na siya maka-infect agad-agad, di ba? So, same siya with cryptosporidium. Unlike sa yung isospora, di ba, and cyclospora, that uh, both of them, again, do not, um, are not yet infective once magpagawas sa stool. Okay? Alright, ayan. Now, normally, again, as I mentioned, iyang appearance kay katong oval na, di ba, na ay doha ka sporosis, um, then I for ka uh, sporozoites, di ba? Para sa arena drawing, katong gahapon. Okay, di ba, Nana? Sorry, parang back, parang mali. <laughs> But anyway, nagmamadali ako sa pag-drawing, di ba? This is the oocyst of your um, isospora belly. But what happens sa sarcosis this man good is, pagpagawas niya, pagpagawas niya, okay, sa body, what happens kay madissolve, madissolve ng outer layer, okay, madissolve siya, alright? 
Ang mabili na lang is the Doha Casporocysts, okay? And these two sporocysts are usually cemented, okay? Nagtaput sila together, okay? Pero iyahang general characteristic or general appearance, same good unta with eye belly, okay? But sa mga infections sa sarcosystis, pagpagawa sa stool, madissolve tong outer, okay? Mawala tong oval na shape. Ang mabili lang kayang sulod, okay? And these two sporocysts are cemented, usually cemented together, or nagtaput sila, okay? All right, ayan. Okay, okay. Ayan. So that's for the oocyst of your sarcosystis. Okay, all right. Now, um, here again, as an example, diba? as you can see, same chuchag appearance, no? Sa mukhang isospora belly. And this is sa wet mouth. Ayan. So as you can see, diba? Nakita pa ning mag-thin na layer, diba? Muni siya ang na-dissolve, adi. Di kan sa kanihang outer wall, diba? So, but as you can see, they are cemented together. Ang doon na lang kasporosis ang nakita. So they are seen singly. So mar nagtapot sila, Okay. Because they are cemented, the best you can see, they're cemented together. Okay, so that's the difference in mohang sarcosystis na oocyst and isospora belly. But in terms of appearance, you're supposed to be, or in terms of morphology, they are the same. Okay, but ilang appearance sa stool sample ang sarcosystis kay sorry, ang sarcosystis kay na dissolve ng outer outer wall niya. So mahita bo is ang mabili na lang kay ang sulod and the inner sporocysts na duwaka bo they are merged together or they are cemented together. Okay. All right, so that's for sarcosystis. Okay, now for disease, uh, the disease is known as sarcosystosis. Okay, um, again, it can be intestinal for humans or pending muscular. So the intestinal sarcosystosis, ang nakuha na to kay ang pagkaon sa imuhang sarcosist, gikan sa imuhang in meat, di ba, undercooked meat. Okay, and usually ang imuhang intestinal sarcosystosis are asymptomatic. But pwede po siya mo present og symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, and nausea. Okay, so na po yung mild fever, diarrhea, chills, vomiting, and respiratory problems. So kung intestinal sarcosystosis, again, ang nakuha sa humans kay from meat, undercooked meat, di ba? Ang nakuha na ito kay sarcosists. That's why we become the definitive host. Gets. Okay. Now, <laughs> may occasionally be severe or even life-threatening in cases na immunocompromised ang patient. Di ba? As usual, we have uh, emphasized that na usually, kanina mga coccidian parasites, ang ilahang great effect are to the patients that are immunocompromised. Example, mga patients with AIDS. Okay? All right. So that's for intestinal sarcosystosis. So in humans, we develop intestinal sarcosystosis if we ingest undercooked meat from pig or pi fish, from pig or cow that has the sarcosists in their muscles, okay? So sarcosists at the infective stage, I mean, okay? All right. Now, in muscular sarcosystosis, what happens in sarco uh, muscular sarco uh, sarcosystosis, this is in cases na kita ma-accidental, maka-ingest o oocysts, okay, from the feces, okay? So example, nakakaunta o like, uh, like nag-alaga nag ka mga cows, no, or like pigs, and then, uh, nalibang sila that contains the oocysts, di ba? Kaya sila man yun ang original na mga intermediate host. So, ang ipagawas nila kay mga oocysts, di ba? Now, let's say, ma matouch ni mo to na feces, no? And maka naghinaog ka mo, na din nakakaon ka. So, ang imo nakaon this time is oocysts, okay? Now, the oocysts will then, padayon siya na mo, mo form o sarcosysts. So, this time, ikaw na yung nahimong intermediate host. So, therefore, mo form o sarcosysts sa imo mga striated muscle, okay? So, sa imuhang muscles, no? Sa imuhang muscles, sa skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles usually, na yung mga sarcosis dito, okay? And ang sarcosis, inside ato kay, of course, bradyzoids, okay? But most of the time, usually, if na yung sarcosis, kay dili siya symptomatic. But, in cases na mamatay na ang sarcosis or, um, yeah, dili na siya mo function, mo release yung mga toxic substances or pagkamatay niya, dito na mo present of symptoms, such as, um, myalgia, muscle weakness, and edema. Okay? But if napan siya dito niya, alive pa yung mga sarcosis, usually di siya mo present ang symptom. If mamatay na yung sarcosis, like ka nang, uh, mamatay na gitsya, no? Dili na siya ready to pro proliferate. Then dito na siya mo release yung mga toxic substances sa pagkamatay niya, which then causes symptoms to humans. Okay? So muscular sarcosistosis, what happens ay kita ang nahimong murag pig or <laughs> Cows. Kaya nga itong nakaon is the oocyst. Diba niya? Pag kaon na ito sa oocyst, the oocyst will then develop, diba, sarcosis sa mga muscles. Diba? Sa pig and cows. Usually. Generally yun. Pero kaya nakaon man na itong oocyst, so nahimot ang accidental na mga intermediate hosts. Okay? So what happens is pag kaon na ito sa oocyst, diba, after the life cycle, whatever, ang end product is sarcosis sa muscles. So kita, na nakakaon sa oocyst as intermediate hosts, we have sarcosis sa atong muscles. Okay? 
All right, ayan. So that's for muscular sarcoidosis. So we we became the intermediate host. So it becomes we become dead end intermediate host or matag mga paratenic host. Kaya because wala na develop further imuhang parasite. Okay, ayan. So muscular sarcoidosis happens again when we accidentally ingest oocysts of sarcoidosis from feces of your cows or pigs. Okay? And once nakaw na tong oocyst, di ba? Mo form siya og sarcoidosis sa imong mga muscles. So ikaw na kay sarcoidosis sa imong muscles. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now inflammation as mentioned follows by this disintegration or death of your bradyzoites inside the sarcoidosis. And what happens again mag magga imong muscles, no? Um and there could be myonecrosis, mamatay imong muscles. So of course, um it can be found, as mentioned, in skeletal and cardiac muscles, but also there have been cases na nakiran siya sa larynx, sa throat, pharynx, and upper esophagus. So, during the pita sa imuhang uh, uh, upper respiratory tract. No? Larynx, pharynx, uh, and sa imuhang esophagus. Okay. So, but iyahang predilection, for, or kung asa siya ganahan, sa skeletal or cardiac muscle. Ayan. So, here's an example. Ay, napay picture. Ah, joke la pa. So, so that's for the diseases. Okay, na gets lang dears. Okay ra, did you understand? But sa uh, intestinal sarcoidosis, if intestinal gani, okay, unsa man atong nakaon ang unsa man atong nakaon? Ko intestinal sarcoidosis, unsa man atong infective stage na nakuha ana? Ko intestinal. Okay, the sarcoidosis. Nya asa man gikan ang sarcoidosis? Gikan sa feces. Okay, from undercooked meat from pig or Cow. Okay. And what happens is, of course, diba? So, makaw na to ang sarcosis. What happens, diba? Kay mo gawas ang bradyzoids sa mong intestine and then mo forms sila gametocytes, diba? And then the gametocytes will fuse together to form the oocyst. So, kita, as definitive host, generally good, ato ang normal yun na mahitabo, kita mag-produce ang mga oocyst if malibang ta. Okay? If ma-infect ang sarcosistosis. Okay? Kung definitive host ta. But in cases of accidental ingestion of oocysts from feces, from the tae no of your cows and pigs so ato makuha this time kay unsa man infective stage kung muscular sarcoidosis ato nakuha kay oocyst the oocyst okay and the oocysts oocyst comes from your feces ay muhang cow and pig okay now what happens if kita ang naka sa oocyst murag bali kita na ang nahimong intermediate host diba which is supposed to be ang pigs ug cows ang imong intermediate host diba generally okay normally so if kita ang nahimong intermediate host therefore the oocyst natong gikaon mahimo siyang sarcosis sa imong mga muscles okay na gets na gets ang difference kung depende sa mga kaon ah depende sa mga kaon okay depende sa infective stage okay so kung sarcosis imo na kaon from again infected meat undercooked meat then you become the definitive host you produce oocyst okay but if you accidentally ingest the oocysts okay you then become the intermediate host and you produce sarcosis sa imo ang muscles okay na gets ra okay ra Huh? <laughs> okay, Rasgi lang. Try to review lang balik if ever medyo confusing pa today or to now. Pero muna siya. Okay? Alright. So for diagnosis, number one is of course, um, we can have presumptive diagnosis based on patient symptoms and history. Ayan. So if the patient symptoms kay nag uh, kalibanga siya, no, na siya intestinal, inti, intestinal, <laughs> intestinal symptoms, nag diarrhea and all that, uh, and then na siya history of eating, no? Um, example, nag samgyup daw siya or like nag, so, ba, sashimi, whatever, basta mga raw or undercooked na meat, nag-steak siya na rare, mga ganun, o diba? Oh, sarap. <laughs> so, uh, na yung mga history na yung ana, so, yung nagkaliba nga siya, then possibly, uh, that could be sarcosistosis. But again, na other parasites, diba? Like, no, mga tapeworm, no, mga other parasites pa. So, one of the things that we can consider is sarcosistosis. Na history of eating, uh, undercooked or raw meat, plus na yung symptoms, Okay. Of course, um, if for stool sample, we may need a lot of uh, stool examinations uh, because your sporocyst cannot uh, be seen every day. Pos possible na intermittent na appearance in one stool. So you may need a lot a lot of stool examinations. Still the same minimum of three pa rin. Ito ang routine, no? Minimum of three stool samples uh, for routine ONP examination. Concentration techniques, zinc sulfate, flotation atong preferred. So flotation methods ang preferred because I believe mas mo float siya, of course. I think lighter imuhang mga cysts. Okay. All right. Next, of course, definitive diagnosis na is biopsy of the infected muscle. In cases of um, natay muscular symptoms like atong myositis, no, nag 
hubag imo masos no muscle weakness or sa cows and pigs atong examine ilang masos to let, to look if na ba mga sarcosis all right so biopsy and then ato siyang stain with hne or pwede pong pass pass staining okay all right ayan now intramuscular infection if kita na ta intramuscular infection of course ang symptoms nato kay myalgia so murag mag inflame mo muscles uh, eosinophilia of course because there's a parasite uh, sa inyong muscles so na market eosinophilia and of course elevated imuhang creatine kinase ayan 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 so your ck levels of course because creatine kinase is a an enzyme in your uh, muscles diba so we have mga 3 ka ang sa to 3 ka uh, isoenzymes among ck you have ck uh, bb ckmm and ck mb diba so kinsa ito atong first na first marker to elevate in your ami is your ckmb ckmb Ha? Huh? First marker to elevate in your AMI, acute myocardial infection? Myoglobin, sir. Ang answer na to? Myoglobin or CKMB? Myoglobin. Myoglobin. Ayan. Basta ang question ka kay first marker, it's myoglobin. Pero ang question, if ang question kay first enzyme to increase in AMI, then atong answer kay? CKMB. CK. Ayan, very good. CKMB. Gichika naman sa mnemonics, Ani? Yes, sir. Ano sa mga yung mnemonics? Ah? Apilaw naman yung mnemonics. Ano sa mga? Ano sa mga yung mnemonics? Ha? Empty cup. Empty something. Ah, na rao. Ano yung mnemonics? The Myotropical Heart. Muna siya, very, very gas-gas na mnemonics. Credit to Sir Errol of Pioneer. Myotropical. So, pinakauna, myoglobin. Second, trop I. Or pwede po trop T. Trop I, trop T. Yes. And then C is CKMB. A for? Ano sa mga yung A? Kay muscle man siya po ng heart. Ano sa mga yung A na enzyme? AST, sir. AST. And L is? Ano ba ng L? LDH. Ayan, LDH. So, myotropical heart. O, oh, ba? So, again, very gas-gas na yun, na gas-gas na mnemonic. Sa review center, sa me as, as med text din, this is how we remember. Myotropical heart. Myoglobin ang pinakaunang marker, mo increase, okay, in AMI, heart attack. Trop I ang second. CKMB ang first enzyme. A is AST, L is LDH. Okay? Alright. Ano sa ba old name sa AST? Hala, CC Compress. SGOT. Ano sa ba na? SGOT or SGPT? SGOT. Ang SGOT. 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 Ano sa ba na? COV. Serum Glucose. Oh, serum Glutamine, di ba? Oxalo. Acetate. So, atong, how do I remember again? This is credits ni Sir Koloyan. So, di ba ang ALT? Muna iyahang old name kay SG. SGPT. Sorry. SGPT. Diba? So, kinsay mo form o LPG. O, oh, diba? So, kung kinsay mo form o LPG, si ALT na siya. Okay? So, ALT, yung old name kay SGPT. Okay. <laughs> and AST is SGOT. Oh, nako. Kamusta na itong CC dyan? Hapit na ra ba yung CC kompre? Okay. <laughs> All right. So don't forget ha, atong mnemonics for your AMI markers. Very important. For how about for pancreatic markers? Ayan. Kinsa my first to elevate? Amylase. Pancreatitis. Amylase. Amylase. Okay. Tama. Tama ba? Amylase ba ang first mo? Ano? <laughs> okay. Yes. That's correct. Di po mumutubag eh. <laughs> Just to confirm. Tama. Amylase imuhang first to increase. No? Pero kinsa may mas specific. To pancreas. Like okay. So, nga namang, nga namang ato dyan pong i-request ang amylase na di man siya specific. Siya may first mo elevate. So. Okay. That is correct. Very good. Siya first na mo elevate. So, in, especially in cases of pancreatitis na emergency cases, para mas ma-confirm, mas important yun ma-detect ang first marker to elevate. Because kung na first marker to elevate, then that could, that could point yun that the patient is experiencing pancreatitis, diba? 
Don't forget. Okay, ayan, sige. Alright, so uh, that's for the diagnosis of your um, sarcosystosis. Of course, if na muscle involvement, increase good ang enzyme sa muscles, no? pwede po kriyakinin, basta mga muscle-related na mga uh, analytes. Okay, alright. Now, here's an example of your biopsy, ayan, of your muscle. Uh, diba, daghang nuclei sa kilid, imong muscle, ano sa manisya ng muscle do you think? Is it skeletal, cardiac, or smooth? Skeletal. <laughs> Parang di ka sure nun, or <laughs> Skeletal ba to? Or, ano, cardiac? Ala pa tayo, wala nang histo na to dyan. <laughs> this is? Joker ba to? So, this is, par, pra, uh, this is uh, probably your skeletal muscle. Diba? Kaya daghang nuclei sa kilid. Diba? Usually, yung man ay uh, characteristics sa imuhang skeletal muscle, daghang nuclei because that's important. Kaya imuhang skeletal muscles are used for energy production, no, mas intense na mga work. So, you need a lot of nuclei to produce your, diba, may mga, uh, you need a lot of cells, rather, with the nuclei para na mga mitochondria to produce the energy. O, oh, diba, parang ganun. <laughs> okay. Now, the circles here, kanina sa tunga, these are the Brady Swicks. And these are the sarcosists. Okay? So, kanina sila, whole structure is the sarcosist. And the inside na mga blue are the Brady Swicks. Okay. Now, this is the close-up appearance. As you can see, kanina mga color blue are the Brady Swicks. Okay? So, closer, higher magnification lang of in an Okay, so kanisya mga color blue are the Brady Zoids. Okay, so once may ingest na to ang uh, infected meat, undercooked meat sa pig or cow, pag ingest na to ana, mo rupture ang sarcosis, mo gawas ng mga Brady Zoids. Okay, all right, so that's for sarcosis. Okay, all right, now before we proceed to blastocystis, dears, do you have any question? Again, what is our first marker to elevate in AMI? Press the buzzer. It's myoglobin. 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 And since we're talking about myoglobin, ayan, sige, AUBF. What is this classical test na pwede natong gamiton para ma-differentiate no, ato ang um, uh, red-colored urine kung hemoglobin ba siya or myoglobin? Ano sa man itong natawag na test? Blondheim's test. Okay, your Blondheim's, no? Blondheim's. So itong gamiton kay, ano sa man na reagent? Your? <laughs> Remember pa ba? Your ammonium sulfate, di ba? So, ang, pros, ang, ang, sana, ang principal ay is precipitation. So, the ammonium sulfate will precipitate hemoglobin out of urine. And after sedimentation, the supernatant will be clear. Because again, na precipitate na ang hemoglobin out of the urine, na mo siya sa sediment. Okay, AUBF, don't forget that. Blondheims ha, Blondheims. Okay. All right. Now in plasma, kita to ni answer sa blunt times ganid eh. Sorry. Si Scarlett ba? Tama. Ako sir. Kinsa? <laughs> Yung kita sa si sir. Ah, Nika. Okay, perfect. Magaling, magaling. Okay. All right. Now in in plasma lang no, edta, edta tube. How will we know if ang myoglobin ba or hemoglobin ang nag-cause sa imong hemolysis? Or unsay appearance di ay rather? Unsay appearance sa imong edta tube? If increased ang myoglobin sa patient. So may color sa plasma. Clear. Clear? Tama ba? Earl, ikaw ba to? <laughs> clear ba Earl? Si Earl ba to? Si Earl to, niyan sir? Iko kita. Yes sir. Okay. Nga naman clear Earl. Nako, ato AUBF. I'm looking at you talaga. Ma mas dali man ma-remove ang myoglobin sa... Okay. Body. Ang galing, ang galing. Very good. That is correct, no? So don't forget, dears, if myoglobin is increased in your patient, sa plasma na to, sa EDTA, if mo collecta, clear ang imuhang uh, plasma, it's because myoglobin is rapidly cleared out of the body compared to hemoglobin. Okay? Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Very good, Earl. I love that. Okay. Sige. So uh, that's for sarcosystis. Okay? So we now proceed to blastocystis hominis. Now, blastocystis hominis, is an amoeba. Actually, it's under your amoeba, supposed to be natin na discussion, but ako rin siyang gibutang sa miscellaneous. Alright? So, blastocystis hominis, um, in a way, it's iyahang uh, identity in a way. 
kay gina question pag yun no there's still a lot of studies about it is it really an amoeba or asabod siya na bilong okay but one thing is for sure it's established that it can cause infection okay all right now initially it was first considered to be a yeast okay it's a yeast not a no charot ay <laughs> ang pangit talaga ng mga jokes <laughs> it was considered to be a yeast before so fungi siya but it's now classified as a protozoan parasite um, under mga electron microscopy studies and other mga um, further na mga studies, it was found out that it was a protozoan parasite. Now, current recommendation nato when we see blastocystis is to report, okay, and quantitate, no, quantitate the presence of this parasite. Now, usually for the other intestinal protozoans, no, we don't quantitate, no. Uh, si blastocystis lang atong i-quantitate because again, <laughs> there's still some uh, discussions on its pathogenicity. And there have been cases na even if little pa lang, little pa lang nakita na blastocystis sa sample, it can now cause infection. So it's best to quantitate para at least mahatagan ng information ang doctor if it's uh, pathogenic ba or it's significant for them. No, Because again, of different cases na gamay pa lang ang, ang number of um, parasites na na symptoms na na-produce. So that's why we quantitate. Okay, para marag mawala itong mga... Um, differences no, in, in terms of the number of parasites na pwede makakos yung infection or dili. Alright? Ayan. Sige. So, quantitate. We need to quantitate blastocystis. And again, as mentioned, iyang identity gipangunta na pag <laughs> Aside from that, iyang role sa pathogenicity, no? It's still being doubted. Could we question pa because nai, nai patients na asymptomatic, nai patients na symptomatic. But it's established that it can now cause um, uh, agents of disease. All right. Now, blastocystis hominis in itself, daghan siyang mga strains, okay, mga, about mga 10 kapin na mga strains. Now, these strains, again, different strains, are the reason siguro why some are symptomatic and the rest and the other patients are asymptomatic. Because not all strains of your blastocystis hominis are uh, pathogenic pod. Okay, so muna na yung mga differences, na yung mga difference, mga subtypes sa blastocystis hominis. Okay? Alright, ayan, sige. Alright, now infective stage is your cyst, pero it's still being postulated, pero di pa good confirmed because studies are still ongoing kung unsa bagyud ninyang life cycle, unsa sa mga mga infective stage, etc. So, dagan pang mga questions no, about this organism. Now, mode of transmission is fecal oral route, pero again, this is still debated, no? It's still being, um, Determine kung sa ganyang life cycle. Um, aside from that, you have sexual practices, no? Pwede po fomites, flies, and cockroaches, which serve as mechanical transmission. So, mechanical vectors na pwedeng mo transmit sa si mohang cysts, okay? Alright, pero ang main jud na murag um, ilahang gina-accept is your uh, fecal oral, okay? From ingestion, alright? So, but again, as I mentioned, life cycle, yung mga morphological stages, uh, structures are still being studied, no? So, wala pa jud definite na parang established na um sanit a uh, life cycle niya okay all right now this is the life cycle diba? as mentioned infection stage is not confirmed pero same same siya with your amoeba diba again ingestion of the cyst no from contaminated food and or water okay all right now for your blastocystis morphology it can uh, occur in four no four major forms the first one is the cyst form the cyst form is thick para sa imuhang Cryptosporidium and I thick and thin. No? So thick is, of course, same as cryptosporidium. It's more on the environmental uh, or external transmission because it can resist the harsh conditions in the environment. Hence, it can survive and can infect another host. The thin shelled, uh, the thin walled, sorry, thin walled cysts are responsible for possible auto infection. So same siya with cryptosporidium. Okay, since ni pis raman ang wall, pas pas rakay siya makagawas, makakos dain siya balik og infection. Okay? All right, ayan. Next is the central vacuole form, or also known as the vacuolated form, or the central body form. And this form is what we see most of the time, the most common form that is seen in your stool samples, okay? And um, yeah, description again, it's, it has a large vacuole na nasa tunga, and because nasa sa tunga, nasa a large vacuole, ang iyahang cytoplasm, okay, kay na push sa kilid, and iyahang mga nuclei kay na sa kilid. Ayan. So basically, in any appearance, say you have vacuolated form. So you have a large fluid-filled vacuole sa tunga, and sa periphery, sa kilid, are the nuclei. Pwede siyang 2 to 4 uh, nuclei. Okay? Ayan. 2 to 4 nuclei. Alright? Um, and again, 90% of blastocystis hominis na makuha sa sample is in the vacuolated form. Kanisha. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, ang purpose daw sa vacuole, it has been postulated na appeal siya sa asexual sexual reproduction. Also, appeal po daw siya sa 
um, lipid and carbohydrate storage for food. No? So, uh, a purpose of your vacuole. So, ina uh, rule sa imuhang blastocystis. Okay, this is the main form found in slew samples and also the main type that causes diarrhea. Okay, all right. Ayan. So, the, blast, uh, the central vacuole or the vacuolated form. Okay, all right. Next, another form is your amoeboid form. It's rarely seen and it's believed to be an intermediate stage between the vacuolar, katong ganina, and the precystic stage. But this form, again, is not uh, seen kaayo sa imuhang stool samples or it can be seen in the stool samples occasionally or paspas lang kaayo. And there may have been cases na, na misidentify siya because the amoeboid form is difficult to identify. Okay? All right. But it's, again, rarely seen. And there can also be granular forms when we uh, in cultures. We see that in cultures of blastocystis. No, they are multinucleated, and usually the granular forms can more rupture, and the contents inside the granular forms will then become the amoeba, the amoeboid form. Okay, all right, ayan. But again, ato ang important thing to remember yun is the vacuolated central body form. Okay, all right. Now again, these are its characteristics. As you can see, the vacuolar form, di ba? Dako kayo nga, and then sa kilid na yung mga Mga dots, which is again the nuclei. The granular form and amoeboid form again rarely seen. Granular form seen in cultures. And then you have the cyst. Again, the cyst pod is not commonly seen in your stool samples. Um, ang pinaka common is the vacuolated form. Okay. Now here's an example of your vacuolated form stained with iodine. Basta gani, makakita mo dako, ah, yes, dako sa tunga, and then sa kilid na yung mga uh, dots. Okay. That's the nuclei. Then press the buzzer, kay blastocystis na siya. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now, uh, we go now to your disease, no? blastocystosis. So, B. hominis may, may it be immunocompromised back or immunocompetent. It can cause symptoms. No? So, pwedeng diarrhea, cramps, nausea, fever, vomiting, abdominal pain, and urticaria. A possible relationship can happen also between intestinal obstruction and infective arthritis. Uh, between uh, B. hominis. Okay. And in patients with other underlying conditions, of course, uh, bahalag uh, makakosyag symptoms immunocompetent. If you are immunocompromised, of course, the symptoms tend to be more pronounced and more severe. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now, um, blastocystosis pa rin. Um, in symptomatic patients, like imong patient example, na present siya sa, sa ER or sa hospital na um, nagkalibanga, nagdiarrhea, pero nakita sa stool sample, wala sila nakita na anything. So possible good etiology agent or cause ato is blastocystis hominis. Okay, because again, of the possibility na na miss siya, wala siya nalantaw sa pag-examine. Okay, now in persons infected with B. hominis, in addition to another pathogenic organism like E. histolytica or jarja, then it's possible daw na si B. hominis ang underlying agent. So you can see na makakosyo siya symptoms. Okay, so and uh, B. hominis is really a pathogen. Okay, it's well established now that it's a pathogen. Okay. Now, of course, if immunosuppressed, immunocompromised, symptoms are more intense, no? And gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal symptoms are more pre, uh, pronounced. Okay. All right. Ayan. Sige. Now, for diagnosis, of course, routine stool examination, but our method of choice is still the permanent stain smears. Because again, di ba, uh, if wet mount, pwede nato siyang mamiss, no? And least would siyang identify. So it's best to use the permanent stain smears. And as I mentioned, we must quantitate the organism because this will give an idea sa doctors if ilabang i-consider na pathogenic ba siya or dili. Okay? Because again, there have been cases na small amount lang of blastocystis ang nakita, nakakos ng symptoms. Okay? So para at least ma-standardize siya or uh, na ay proper way of reporting, then we quantitate. But that would depend on each laboratory. You uh, The laboratory must communicate to the doctors kung unsa lang reporting for blastocystis or um, their reporting na mga parameters. Okay? All right. Now, other possible pathogens, again, should be adequately ruled out. Let's say, wala d'yo kayo nakitang jarja, entamoeba, or other mga more common na pathogens. If wala kayo nakita, but your patient is still experiencing mga symptoms, no diarrhea, and all that, then we can consider blastocystis hominis. Okay. All right. Now, serum antibody detection, ELISA and fluorescent antibody test. Now, your um, there have been cases na strong ang antibody response sa mga patient to blastocystis. So, that indicates that your blastocystis really can cause infection, okay? intense man, or na may antibody response good from the patient. Okay. All right. Uh, so, here's an example of your uh, B. hominis, vacuolated forms of a very important. So, in wet mat, basta kapakita agad ni mong dako sa center and then ay kilid ng mga dots, then 
that's B. hominis. Okay, and sa stain smear, of course, mas claro, you have here the vacuole and sa kilid, periphery are the nuclei. Okay, all right. Now, again, the vacuole can can assume a lot of colors, depende sa stain, no? Sa trichrome ba? Sa trichrome, pwede siya kanina, yan, 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 yan color, or sa obang stains, pwede put colorless na siya. Okay, basta you have to take note lang, large vacuole sa center, and periphery kay na ay mga nuclei. Okay, that's blastocystis hominis. Again, this is the form that is most common in your... Um, Blastocystis hominis, sa stool samples. Now, um, before uh, staining, no, it's recommended that you don't expose your Blastocystis hominis um, in water. And even sa wet mouth, dilita mo gamit og saline because water and saline can lyse your Blastocystis hominis which could prevent us from identifying them. Okay, so it's uh, suggested na if wet mouth imo produce like direct fecal smear, you use iodine. Okay, you don't use saline or water because again it can it can lyse it can lyse the blastocystis hominis na mga cysts or, or vacuolated forms uh, which can lead to us not identifying them or not seeing them okay all right that's blastocystis hominis okay all right so uh, before we proceed happy to tamahuma yes <laughs> do you have any questions any questions dears okay all right. Again, the first enzyme, first enzyme to increase in your AMI. First enzyme, huh? You have CKMD. CKMD. Okay, CKMD, CKMD, creatine kinase. Okay, very good. All right. So that's for blastocystis hominis. Okay. Now for the remaining two, kanis lang doha usually are again very important nito sa mga immunocompromised na mga patients. So we we'll start first with your algae. Um, a very important species lang is the Prototheca. Now Prototheca species or your algae, they are not parasites, but they can cause um, opportunistic infections to again to your immunocompromised uh, patient. Two species important is the Prototheca wickerhamii and Prototheca zopfii. All right, so these are algae found in the environment, but once um, it is introduced to the body, especially in the immunocompromised, uh, it can cause uh, infections. Okay, all right. Now, susceptibility to infection is not well defined, but it's primarily due to the inability of your neutrophils to phagocytize, no, or phago to kill the phagocytosed organisms. Because especially in immunocompromised, no, could be your neutrophils are not functioning well, na pod. so uh, they don't have the ability to kill the phagocytosed organisms. Okay. Now, life cycle morphology, as you can see, mo produce yung mga sporangiospores. Ayan, <laughs> so mga sporangium that contains sporangiospores. So it's quite similar to your. Fungi. Ayan, okay. Maiko, kamusta tayo dyan? Okay. So, sporangium contains mga sporangiospores. And these sporangiospores ato makuha. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Now, um, for clinical disease, uh, majority kay cutaneous. Alright? But night times na pwede siyang ma maabot sa bursa. Sa olecranon bursa. Meaning, diri sa imuhang uh, diri dapit. Okay? Sa imuhang elbow. Okay? Olecranon. Okay. But in immunocompromised patients, disseminated inf infections may occur. Alright. Cutaneous, bursal, again, cutaneous or kane, olecranon, bursa. It's through inoculation, trauma. No? Possible na natamaan ka og like foreign object and it contains the algae na prototheca dito de na, na, na inoculate siya sa si skin or pwede po siyang uh, surgical, possible na surgical, um, contaminated imong surgical materials. No? So pwede siyang inana. So basta trauma or accidental inoculation. Okay. Now, bursal infection, swelling, maghubag ni siya, okay? And I tenderness, so medyo soft siya i-touch, okay? So, ayan, all right. Tapos, you have uh, cutaneous lesions, again, pwedeng papules, nodules, erythema, and mga ulcerated areas, okay? And immunocompromised patients, uh, there have been a recorded case of meningitis, nabot siya sa brain, uh, seen in AIDS, no? in an AIDS patient. So, possible yun siya mo-disseminate, especially if immunocompromised ang patient. Okay. And infections have also been seen in the gallbladder, peritoneum, and liver, uh, consistent with sclerosis and cholangitis. Again, commonly seen in mga AIDS patients, mga immunocompromised. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now, we go now to your diagnosis. Of course, number one is culture. <laughs> it can grow on fungal, fungal culture. No? So, ato mga culture media sa, for fungi, isolation, uh, especially those dapat walay cyclohexamide. No? So, cyclohexamide is usually incorporated in some fungal culture media to uh, prevent diba, the growth of other unwanted fungi. No? But for um, for your prototheca, it's best that you don't use cyclohexamide. Okay? So, ang yang colonies kay creamy, oh, yes, yeast-like sa saborodes medium. Ayan. So, creamy yeast-like colonies. Okay. And microscope examination, the sporangia, ayan, with sporangia spores can be seen. Yes. Mycology. Yes. Biochemical testing, pwedeng glucose and galactose. 
si P. wickerhamii and Zopfii can assimilate or can ferment your glucose and galactose. For P. wickerhamii, pwede po silang mu-assimilate mu sa tree, tree hollows na sugar. Okay, so mga biochemical testing, further testing lang siya. And histology, example, if mga bursa or cutaneous infection, if ato siyang i-submit for histological uh, testing or processing, we then use the Grocots Methanamine Silver, GMS. Diba usually mga fungi na pang stain, usually apil ang Grocots Methanamine Silver. Okay, so of course, uh, get a sample from your cutaneous uh, lesion and then process histologically and then stain with GMS or Grocots Methanamine Silver. Okay, all right. So here's an example. Your prototyca colonies, as you can see, through creamy yeast-like colonies. Medyo dag ko siya na colonies. And you have here, again, the sporangia, sporangium, and the inside are the sporangia spores. Okay? Using your LPCB, lactophenol, cotton blue, na stain. Okay? All right. So that's for prototheca. Again, rare na po ni siya ng mga infections. And again, usually commonly seen in patients that are immunocompromised. Okay. All right. And... Ayan, these are example of your prototheca in a tissue that are stained by GMS or Grocots Methanamine Silver. Basta ganin ka ng mga Methanamine Silver, Grocots, ganun. Ang color gila na kay black, di ba? Black yung muhang mga cysts or black yung organisms and then ang background kay green. Ayan, sige. So don't forget that, okay? Grocots Methanamine Silver. Okay, alright. And our last topic uh, before we end is your microsporidia. Okay, so do you have any questions, dears, before we end? Uh, before before we go to our last nano organisms, okay, all right, ah yeah, sige sige, all right. So microsporidia. Now your microsporidia usually uh, actually is belonging to another phylum, de ba? Your phylum Apicomplexa, which is again including your coccidians, malaria, and babesia. But for microsporidia, it's under another phylum, which is your microspora. Okay, so microspora yung phylum, and the organisms are known as your microsporidia. Okay, all right. Now, microsporidia are obligate pa rin, intracellular, uh, spore-forming parasites. Now, they were first considered, again, as fungi because of different characteristics like presence of chitin, silang cell wall, di ba? Uh, similar similarities in cell cycles and mga gene organizations. But further studies revealed that it's actually um, it's actually part of fungi, no? Highly evolved fungi, but yang life cycle and other characteristics quite different from uh, the fungi. Okay, so munang karon it's still under the realm of parasitology, but maybe in the future mabali na siyang mycology. Okay, pareha sa nomocystis, urovetsi, na from a protozoa na himo siyang fungi, ganun. So, ang microsporidia, basin padulong na po siya dito na na, 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 na path. Okay, dito na siya padulong. So, uh, for now, it's still under parasitology. Okay, alright, ayan. Now, infective stage is your spore. Ayan, diba? It's re really unusual for a parasite to have spores, diba? Usually, mga fungi man na. And modes of transmission, pwede siyang ingestion or pwedeng inhalation of your spores. And the mature spores, they have what we call a polar tube. Okay? So, kanin polar tube, uh, this is what the parasite, uh, the microsporidia uses or, or use para makasulod o uh, mga contents the host cell. Okay? So, later, we'll look into the picture. Okay. All right. Now, life cycle, again, sporoplasm or ang content sa sulod sa imuhang uh, spores, okay? Iyang ingest, uh, iyang inject sa imuhang host cell through the polar tubule. Ayan. So, inan siya ka intense, no? And then, padayo na sa imuhang uh, different life cycles, you have schizogony, merogony, or uh, sporogony. Ayan. And both merogony and sporogony, both the asexual and sexual, can happen at the same time at the same cell, o diba? So, all in one, ayan, okay. And during sporogony, of course, ang maproduce kayang mga spores, yapon. And the spores contain a thick wall, again, to prevent or to protect it from the environment. Okay, ayan. Now, mature spores, again, as mentioned, they contain a polar tube, polar tubule, because this polar tube or polar tubule is used for injecting, okay, the sporoplasm or contents sa sulod sa imong spore padulong sa host cell, okay? All right. So, my picture later, I think. Ayan. So, these are examples of species of your uh, microsporidias, Enterocytozoon bayinusi. Okay? So, as you can see, kanisha ang polar tubule, yang inject sa imuhang epithelial cell. Okay? And the contents of your uh, spore will now uh, go on to the different, diba? Life cycle, merogony, sporogony, schizogony, diba? Ayan. And, muna siya, polar tubule, that's the purpose. Okay, alright. Ayan. Sige. Now, uh, 
we go now to the disease. No, your microsporidia again, uh, usually very important lang in the immunocompromised. In the immunocompetent, usually, again, diseases are self-limiting. And microsporidia can contain a lot of species you know, of mga microsporidia. So we're going to focus now on the more important, more common ones. Okay, all right. Now, majority again, immunocompetent lang ka, chronic or persistent infections, pero few symptoms lang or dili kayo siya na deadly or life-threatening. But for the immunocompromised, the symptoms can be overwhelming and can lead to death. Okay, all right. Most well-known members are again encephalitozoon, bayanusi, and encephalitozoon intestinalis. O diba? Baling liso na sila mga nga lang. Shucks. Okay, ayan. But again, these are the microsporidia na pinaka-common. But they are a lot, no? This phylum contains a lot of microsporidial organisms, not only infecting man, but also other animals. Usually common siya sa mga animals and sa environment, okay? But sa man, again, important siya, especially in the immunocompromised, okay? All right, ayan. We'll start first with your enterocytosuun uh, bayanusi, or bayanusi. As you can see, yahang symptoms, intestinal gapon, same with cryptosporidiosis and isosporiasis, no? It can lead also to sclerosing cholangitis kung mo spread siya. You have also, uh, pwede siya sa imuhang respiratory tract, no? If mo abot siya dito. Multi-organ also can happen. Uh, Multi-organ dissemination if, na, again, immunocompromised ang patient. And if immunocompetent ka, as I mentioned, self-limited lang infection and may resolve within two weeks. Okay, but again, mode of transmission is still ingestion, contaminated food or water ba, with the spores or inhalation. Okay, all right. That's enterozytozoon by Yenusi. Okay. Next, you have encephalitozoon SPP. Now, wide range of disease in AIDS patients. As you can see, katun mga itis, itis. Diba? Dagan kayo. Kerato, conjunctivitis sa eyes, no? Bronchiolitis, prostatitis, etc. So, wide range good of diseases in the immunocompromised. And encephalitozoon um, intestinalis, usually small intestine ang um, infect, but it can disseminate to the kidneys and other organs. Okay? It's responsive to therapy unlike um, enterocytozoon by Yenusi. Okay? So, uh, mas good ang prognosis ng encephalitozoon. Okay, can we respond to therapy? Okay, all right. Now, other microsporidia. So, you have Brachiola algeri. Okay, transmitted by mosquitoes. Diba? Ang dami talagang ginagamit si mosquitoes. <laughs> Ayan. And then, infections can be found in the muscle and eye. All right, and probably a uh, possible put on disseminated infections. You have Pliostophora, SPP. Rarely identified but can cause muscle weakness. Uh, fever, lymphadenopathy, and weight loss in some patients. Again, seen the good primarily sa mga immunocompromised na mga patients. Other species, you have Trachypliostophora, SPP. You have T. hominis, which causes sinusitis and myositis. And you have T. anthropophthera, anthropophthera, which was recently discovered to found in a brain tissue, in the kidneys and heart, and even other mga tissues of body in an AIDS patient. So, pwede dyan po na ang dissemination. Okay. All right. Now, you have Vitaforma cornei. So, by the name itself, it's usually seen in the eyes, no? Sa cornea and possibly sa kidneys. It was the first human isolate established in culture, in vitro na culture. Okay. So, Vitaforma cornei. And last, Sinosema bombicis, no? Sinosema bombicis, it doesn't affect man, pero it infects uh, your silkworm and it causes uh, damage to your silkworm industry kata magproduce mga silk no so it causes a pebrine or pepper disease in your silkworm so it's this is the first parang microsporidial parasite that was described because mga 1800s it was a problem in the silk industry sa France that's why yahang ngalan kay pebrine so mura french word m so uh, si Louis Pasteur no ang naka describe sa Nosema bombicis Okay, but dili pa no sema bombisis ang ngalan nato. So, gi-describe lang siya, okay? And then mga after pila ka years, after pila ka centuries, gingan lang siya no sema bombisis. Again, it causes pebrine or your pepper disease in silkworms, okay? Ayan. So, very important. So, yan, this is an example of microsporidia sa imuhang lecture microscopy. This is the polar tubule, okay? Na yahang gi sulod. Ay, yang gi pasulod shot. <laughs> yang gi pasulod sa intestinal cell to inject no ang sulod sa iyang uh, spore or your sporoplasm padulong sa intestinal cell to infect the new intestinal cell okay and this is an example of your enterocyte uh, enterocytosuun by Yenusi electron microscope inside the epithelial cell so, so kani mga color red muni siya ang enterocytosuun by Yenusi okay all right now, how do we, um, a picture pala. So, here's an example of E. intestinalis, encephalitozoon intestinal, intestinalis. 
inside the cell, kani mga red arrows. Uh, and then you have here, um, I kind of black arrows there, sorry. And then this is the pebrine or pepper disease. So ang, ang imuhang letter A, ang normal na silkworm. And then ang letter B kay ang uh, na ay pebrine. So as you can see, may mga black dots daw. So mara pepper, na mga peppers sa iyahang surface sa skin. Okay? Ayan. So mara siya, pebrine, pepper disease, again caused by nosema bombesis. Okay, all right. For diagnosis, number one is, of course, histology. Must best siya if histology because, again, gigan siya sa tissue. We can stain with your past silver stains or acid fast stains. Pwede put gram stain. So gram stain, because they are yeasts or like mga higher organism, they will stain as gram positive. Okay? So gram positive sila. All right. Next, uh, spore. Past positive gapon and the spore coat contains with silver or can be stained with your silver. Okay. And spores can be acid fast variable. And of course, kung routine histology, ang best approach good is tissue examination by electron microscopy. O, diba? So, dra pa lang daan, it's very limited because not all of your routine hospitals, routine laboratories have the capability to have electron microscopy or wala electron microscopy good in routine hospitals. So, it's very difficult. So, usually, these procedures are done in high-end laboratories, mga reference labs, no? research labs. Ayan. So, tissue examination by EM, electron microscopy, ang best approach for the differentiation of the different genera of your microsporidia. Now, kung, um, and this is an example, no? Uh, e intestinalis and e bayinusi inside your intestinal cell using transmission electron microscopy, diba? So, mas makita siya, okay? Kaysa sa routine biopsy na to, diba? So, it's best good if electron microscopy. But it's very limited, no? Because again, not all hospitals have the capability for that, especially here in the Philippines, no? Kamahal. Okay, all right, ayan. Next, you have routine stool exam. Your stool smears or preparation should be very thin, okay? Staining time must only be 90 minutes and it should be examined under OIO because these are small organisms, all right? And if thick ay mohang stool, pwede nadaghang artifacts that could be mistaken as your uh, microsporidia. Okay, ayan. All right. Now, stain of choice, di ba, is your modified trichrome. So, the stain of choice for your intestinal microsporidia is your modified trichrome stain. The spores will be pinkish red and must include always a positive control to be safe, to be accurate in identifying. Na chak to good ako na And uh, you should treat it with 10% KOH to provide a better quality na mga smears para mas mawala to mga artifacts that could be mistaken as the, uh, the spores of microsporidia. Okay. Now, other special stains, stains, you can also use mga chemofluorescent uh, brightening agents such as calcofluorite and mga other stains usually for mga, mga fluorescent, okay? Usually used for fungi, no? So, calcofluorite and the other mga chemofluorescent optical brightening agents. Okay, all right. Next, again, these are example of your microsporidia stained uh, by modified trichrome. Again, red, di ba? Pinkish red. And then you have here the calcofluorite na fluorescent na pagka-stain sa mohang microsporidia. Di ba? Recall sa atong first lecture for uh, modified trichrome, we have two methods, di ba? Ryan blue and Weber green. And ang difference lang is sa background. So kung ang background kay blue, Ryan blue. Kung green, Weber green. Okay. But the appearance of the spores to the same, pinkish red. Okay. All right. Ayan. Next, antigen detection. Uh, again, different mga amino assays, indirect fluorescent antibody, reagents not widely available. Serological test, amino assays, Japan, but cross reactivity may occur among the genera. So it's not commonly used. Molecular methods, still not yet widely used in your labs. Cell culture, if you want to do cell culture, mugamit siya mga live cells para sa viruses, like your viral cells, no? human fetal lung, fibroblasts, and other uh, live cell cultures, okay? So it's more on confirmatory and diagnostic uh, information, okay? But again, that's high-end na ng mga procedures not common in routine uh, laboratories. And lastly, microsporidial spores, again, can be recovered in a lot of specimens, not only stool, but also body fluids, no? You have mga aspirates, sa eyes, etc., etc. Because again, it can be, it can cause dissemination or it can cause uh, disseminated infections, especially in the immunocompromised, okay? So it's best to really uh, look, no, into the stool sample. And in AIDS patients, immunocompromised patients, dears, no, uh, microsporidia can be seen in 30% of AIDS patients that also has cryptosporidiosis. So it's best to really identify or look into the stool sample if nabasya cryptosporidium or what. So you have to perform also modified acid fast and modified trichrome sa sample so that you can see or you can recover 
at least uh, the cryptosporidium and the microsporidia. Because again, in 30% of AIDS patients, if na siya cryptosporidiosis, na po yung microsporidia na appeal. Okay? So because again, microsporidia, cryptosporidiosis are very important diseases na uh, emerging diseases, uh, opportunistic infections among the immunocompromised. Okay? All right. And that's the end of your miscellaneous uh, protozoa. Yes, and we're done for today. Okay. Uh, yes, before we end, any uh, questions or any clarifications? None, sir. Okay. All right. Ayan. So, medyo 